once again. <clears throat> this is me, Leonard Wells, broadcasting as usual from Haslington, 30 miles or 50 kilometres due north of Manchester in the UK, on Sunday the 25th of September 2011. This is my series, The United States of Europe, which is my dream. And we're going alphabetically through the 27 countries which at this moment comprise the EU. Uh, and um, we're looking today at Hungary, quite a small landlocked country, but it has the largest lake, Lake Balaton, largest lake in Europe. And um, approximately 10 million population. Budapest is the capital and it's on the Danube. In fact it was two cities, Buda and Pest, which became the capital Budapest. Uh, and um, approximately three million people live in Budapest. Now I gather from my little bit of reading of the history of Hungary, the Magyars, who were the people who in inhabited Hungary around the 9th century arrived from around the Black Sea coast, southern Russia and the Black Sea coast um, and their language is quite similar, well I won't say too similar but akin to Finnish so there's some connection there with those tribes. How it all pans out nobody knows precisely because just over the border in Romania we have a Latinized people um, language from, um, from Rome. Anyway, um, around the 13th century, Hungary was invaded by the Mongols, you know, the great Mongol invasion, which almost took over the whole world. It didn't last very long. Um, and in the 16th century, uh, one of the leaders of Hungary, defeated the Turks at a great battle at Belgrade. But the following century, the 17th century, the Turks came back and took over Hungary for 150 something years. And eventually, uh, uh, later they were thrown out. Then coming more up to date, oh, all kinds of changes happened around the First World War. Constantly, um, uh, Romania and uh, other countries surrounding it would be contesting and they would be having quite major wars taking bits of each other's territory off them and, and even today there are pockets of Hungarian speaking people all, all, all around this area particularly in Romania there's, there's areas with Hungarian speaking peoples and it causes sort of friction um, and then coming up to um, more modern times when Adolf Hitler uh, and the grisly gang who worked his wicked will were on the rampage, Hungary allied itself with Nazi Germany. Uh, Germany started the war, but Hungary initially was neutral. Until in 1941, when Germany attacked Russia. And Hungary decided to join in. And it also attacked Russia. Was, most of its army was decimated. Uh, and um, at the time it declared war on uh, Russia, it also declared war on Great Britain and the United States. Did you know we'd ever been at war with Hungary? <laughs> Difficult to remember all these things, isn't it? Anyway, of course, as we know, Germany was eventually defeated and Hungary was taken over by Russia uh, in what was called the Iron Curtain uh, and of all the countries within the Iron Curtain Hungary was one of the few which really made efforts to escape from the iron grip of um, Stalin and the Russians. In, in 1956 the Russians were forced to invade because a very liberal government had come to power and the um, the uh, new Prime Minister was eventually bumped off, executed by the Russians. 
that's the way they worked in those days. Anyway, eventually, as we know, Hungary was instrumental in the changes which brought about the end of communism. And it, in fact, I gather, it um, opened its borders with Austria so that um, anybody who wanted to, from the communist side, could escape, once they could get to Hungary, they could escape into the West through these open borders. Because, of course, the Iron Curtain was there to prevent people from escaping. Very few people could get passports, but once that border was opened, they could come through. And it wasn't long before the Berlin Wall fell and all the rest of it, and so on and so forth. And since then, Hungary has joined the EU and it has joined Schengen, but not the euro, it still has its own currency. The uh, currency is called, if you give me one second while I look at my notes, I think it's called a florin or something. Let's have a look. Florin, is it? Beg your pardon, forint. Forint, I knew it sounded like that. Uh, but um, it's, uh, it's about third something, roughly the third the size of the UK. Um, so it's quite sparsely populated, like Romania. Romania is almost as big as the UK and yet it's only got 22 million people. So plenty of open spaces, nice, free, fresh feeling, you know, it's not as if everybody's, like in England, they're all trying to live within 100 yards of Guildford town centre, it seems to me, that's the feeling you get in the south of England. But once you're away from Bucharest, there's plenty of space. And I, whenever I go to Bucharest, where my girlfriend lives, we take the train overnight right to the far north where her parents live. At the moment, it's about 26 degrees, 27 during the day in Bucharest. Up in the far north where we, where we go, it's 6 by day and minus 3 by night. So you need to take your long johns with you. Thermal underwear, if you know what I mean. Anyway, today, Hungary is part of NATO and part of the EU and doing reasonably well. Excuse me. But when you look at individual countries, it's very easy to get a gloomy picture. But actually, collectively, the gross domestic product of the 27 countries, in total, is, is greater, almost as great, I beg your pardon, almost as great, China and the USA combined. Isn't that a credible statistic? So rather than keep thinking how weak we are, we should realise how strong we are. We knock China into a cocked hat and the United States. And certainly population wise we put Russia and America into the shade. Only China and uh, India um, outdo us. And I would like to see other countries join like Turkey and eventually the Ukraine and the rest of the little Balkan states. Who knows where the future will, will take us? And I'd like to see Norway and Switzerland come in instead of pussyfooting around on the edge. And I'd like to see the UK playing a proper part instead of saying I, we, would, we want to join the golf club but we want our own size, different size ball to everybody else. It's not cricket, you know. Well, there you have it. God bless while it's still legal in the UK to say God bless. Speak to you again soon. All the best.